Hi, this is Dr. John Meyer. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, the uh, second installment of the uh, Hormone Hour. So uh, my plan is to, uh, you know, do this, oh, uh, every Thursday around 4 o'clock and uh, just present a different topic or if there's a topic that uh, seems to be, um, you know, misunderstood a bit, in the clinic and, uh, you know, common questions that I have, I'll address those uh, to the general public and, uh, you know, see if we, you know, can get the, uh, the message out there um, about hormones. And um, today, uh, we're going to talk about testosterone today for men and women. And, uh, you know, I get this question quite a bit that, uh, you know, do women actually need testosterone? And uh, interesting enough, I, I found that that women seem to uh, really get a tremendous benefit from uh, testosterone replacement, and uh, maybe even more so than men. Uh, I just see, you know, an increase in vitality, and uh, and uh, you know, it's just uh, it's pretty impressive. But uh, anyway, that's the talk for today. Uh, that's our number at the uh, clinic, 601-898-0911. And uh, we'll get started and kind of go through this thing and uh, and then, you know, see if there's any questions at the end. And uh, we'll just continue to do this uh, every week. Oh, let's see. There we go. So just going to do a quick little presentation and uh, answer, and then you know see if there's any questions at the end. So uh, that's me, and uh, quickly just my biography so people know that, you know they don't know who I am. Um, I'm an osteopathic physician. I uh, received my medical degree in 1991 from uh, the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. I did a rotating internship in Iowa in uh, 1992, so that was one year. Then I did an anesthesiology residency at the University of Mississippi for four, for three years, rather, from 1992 to 95. Uh, became board certified in anesthesia in 1995. I've been a practicing anesthesiologist in the Jackson metro area uh, since 1995. Uh, about five years or so ago, I became interested in, in this type of medicine mainly for my own edification, just, just because I enjoyed the medicine. And uh, uh, got a board certification from the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine and Metabolic and Nutritional Medicine. And then followed that up with uh, uh, eight modules uh, for a fellowship and, uh, from, from the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. So that took a while, that took about four years. Um, one thing I like to do at the beginning of my talks is to kind of help people understand my rationale and the way I think. Um, and basically what I like to do is, is I like to reverse engineer basically the, you know, the mortality statistics for people over the age of 40. So what are the things that, that are going to kill us after the age of 40? So... If you're older than 40 and you're a non-smoker and not suicidal, these are, these are the top four. Cardiovascular disease and cerebral vascular disease or stroke is by far number one. That's, that's the big thing that we have to prevent. And uh, that's a big part of what I do in the clinic. And we'll talk about the, the, the leverage that can be pulled to affect that. Cancer's number two. Uh, neurodegenerative diseases are number three, and that's to include Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, that sort of thing. And number four is accidents. Yeah, younger uh, patients, accidents are going to be you know, motor vehicle accidents, and uh, older patients, it's going to be falls. So the, what I was talking about earlier, the, the, the levers that we can uh, pull to affect uh, our health Number one is diet and nutrition. It always comes back to diet and nutrition, number one. And uh, in my metabolic reset program, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, diet and nutrition. 
and my feelings about uh, diet and nutrition. And as, as most of you may know, hormones play a big part in that also. There's just different hormones is what we're talking about today. You know, th there we're talking about cortisol and insulin and leptin. And um, we address all of those hormones in that program. Number two, sleep. Sleep is huge, folks. And um, I know, you know, it was kind of a big deal, especially when I was younger and, you know, a resident that, uh, you know, we thought we were pretty macho. We didn't need sleep. We could stay up and, you know, work 36 hour shifts and it was no big deal, but it's a big deal. And uh, you have to get proper amounts of sleep for good health. Stress management. I uh, talked to all my patients about stress management, and very few have any type of practice for stress management. So I recommend yoga. Uh, I, I like meditation. I do meditation personally. And uh, uh, exercise is uh, number four there on the list. Big believer in resistant exercise and uh, muscle mass. You really, as you get older, muscle mass becomes incredibly important. And uh, maintaining muscle mass um, helps with insulin sensitivity a great deal. So big believer. And my, my aerobic portion of my workouts and pretty much what I recommend to most people are high intensity interval training of some sort. And then hormones. So we check a lot of hormones in the clinic and uh, we address many of those uh, hormones. Um, and again, today we're going we're gonna to talk uh, just testosterone today. That's it. So quickly, what are, what are hormones? They're just really messengers. All is is what a hormone is. So they they go from one organ to the cells of your body, and they provide a message uh, to that particular cell. And uh, they work in a lock and key fashion. The hormone docks essentially with the cell and affects the change with that cell. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in polytherapy, and uh, it's not that I haven't used other things in the past, and I have, I've used pretty much all of them with most of my patients. I've used creams, I've used gels, um, I've used all of these things, but the pellets have really made a big difference, and, and I really see a major difference in my patients with the pellet therapy. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. And funny, funny enough, um, I was not a big fan of pellets for a long time. And uh, the people that taught most of the courses that I took in my, to uh, become board certified and, and in the fellowship program, they didn't really like, they didn't like pellets. They were all cream, you know, they were a big advocate of cream, biased and those, those types of things. And that's what I, that's what I used. And uh, somebody talked me into to pellets, and I went to a course, and, and I was very skeptical, to be honest with you, because, you know, so it was an invasive procedure, and there was not a necessary, you know, it wasn't necessary. But then once I went and I actually saw somebody putting pellets, it's, it's really not a big deal. And, uh, you know, your risk from getting the pellets as far as the minor surgical procedure extremely low. Uh, and... Well, well, we'll go into the, the pros and pellets in just a little bit, but uh, as you can tell, I'm an advocate. You know, the first thing the first thing I address with uh, with hormone therapy, especially estrogen and testosterone, you know, people are concerned about cancer, so we always have to address the Women's Health Initiative uh, for breast cancer and cardiovascular disease for women, and we do that. And for men, it's uh, testosterone and prostate cancer. So we do that also. And, uh, you know, the take-home point is, is that uh, many of these studies initially that, that uh, proposed an increased risk in, in cancer, there were, you know, the wrong medications in the case of uh, estrogen and, uh, and just poorly designed studies. But uh, what we're seeing now with, with the literature is a tremendous benefit that you get from these hormones. And uh, we're going to go over those benefits. So what happens when, when these hormones, you know, start to decrease? Uh, you know, and, and when they do start to decrease, 
you know, where do you go to get, uh, where do you go to get uh, your hormones checked? How do you get them checked? I mean, do you, do you get blood levels, saliva, urine? There's, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, conflicting, uh, you know, advice out there. And believe me, I've heard it all. And I've heard, you know, at, at different points, you can be swayed in all different directions. Right now, I'm a, I'm a believer in blood levels. I get blood levels on all my patients. That's what I use. They're reliable. And, um, you, know, you know, I know some people would disagree with me strongly, but I really believe that. So the first thing I ask when somebody comes into the clinic, how do, you, how do you feel? I mean, we want to know how you feel, what's going on with your life. And that's going to be a question that uh, I ask every time you come back to the clinic, even after you've had uh, therapy. So, yeah, it's pretty funny, of course. You know, do, do you have headaches? Do you, do, you know, do you feel overweight? Uh, or do you feel like this, this guy? He's, he's super excited with his, uh, with his hormones and his pellets, obviously. So, uh, yeah, but we, want, but we really do. We want, we want everybody to feel well. And, the, you know, the, the things that, that uh, we see when we ask patients about, uh, about how they're feeling, when these hormones start to become low, you know, fatigue is probably ubiquitous in, in all my patients. I would say 95% of patients have fatigue, and it's incredibly common. Mood swings, anxiety is very common, depression is very common. Uh, we see a lot of SSRIs and you know, Prozac, Paxil, and those drugs that have been you know, uh, given to patients for, for this anxiety problem. Difficulty sleeping, waking up in the middle of the night, I see that a lot. Um, brain fog. Again, very, very common, especially with women. I, I see that a lot with women. And uh, they just you just don't feel the way you used to. Uh, night sweats, hot flashes, weight gain, um, and then decreased sexual performance and drive. You know, I that's kind of the bottom of my list in the, in the sense that especially for men, it's you know, if you, you talk to a man about testosterone, and you know that's the only thing they're thinking about that that, that well, you, you know that you're somehow accusing them that they don't have that their sexual performance or libido is low, and and really there's so much more that you gain from testosterone uh, than that. I mean you know and and we'll go over that in, in just a moment. So testosterone deficiency, I, I found this number interesting. Costs 190 to 525 billion dollars in U.S. expenditures per year. That was a study done in, in uh, journal Sex Medicine in 2013. Now, how they arrived at those numbers, I have no idea. And uh, yeah, it's a bit dubious. I mean, it's a bit variance in those two numbers: 190 to 525 billion dollars. That's that's a lot of money in between there. But anyway, I, I thought that was an interesting, uh, you know, statistic. You know, women, you know, women's concerns with testosterone. First of all, you know, most women, you know, you'll talk to them about testosterone, testosterone, and they'll be like, they didn't even really know they needed testosterone, and uh, and then you know, obviously, the concern is going to be, you know, unwanted masculine traits from testosterone. They don't want to be masculinized. So, you, you, you know, we talked to him about that. Unwanted hair growth, which is, which is a potential, and we talked to our patients about that and the medications that we can use to help prevent that if it does happen, and things that we can do. Hair loss, again, a potential, not very high, but it can happen and has to be addressed. And I warn all my patients about, you know, these Last three, unwanted hair growth, hair loss, and acne. I, I talk to all my patients about that. And, uh, you know, I don't want any surprises. And, uh, again, I'm a big believer in the benefits, but you have to know the downside to everything that, uh, that you do, no matter what it is. So, again, will it, we can address any of, the, any of those problems if they do arise. Uh, now, the benefits, you know, I say women's benefits just 
basically because of breast protection on this particular slide. But most of these, these, these you know, are benefits that men receive also. Alzheimer's prevention and dementia, testosterone is very beneficial to your brain. And breast protection, testosterone is protected to the breast. And uh, definitely get cardiac protection, increased bone mass, and increased libido. Now, when we talk about men, you know, we talk about andropause, menopause, whatever. Um, 20% of males over 50 have low testosterone. I would say that number is probably a little higher, or at least in the people that I've, you know, uh, done lab work on. I, maybe it's, you know, maybe that's because when patients finally do come to see see me, they're they're they know that they're having some sort of some symptoms of testosterone loss, and oftentimes these same men have comorbid conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure. And those, those people are much more likely to have low testosterone levels. But again, linked to early heart disease, and it's very underdiagnosed because, let's face it, men just don't want to have their testosterone checked. They, you know, it, it, it becomes a manly issue that, uh, you know, if you admit that uh, you're not feeling great, that, uh, you know, there's something wrong with you when we can correct it very easily. Yeah, I, you know, this is, this is a pet peeve of mine. These, you know, the commercials on TV, yeah, I don't have much to say about that. I mean, getting medical advice from, from TV is, you know, not a great idea. Testosterone, uh, major symptom relief, and we, we've talked about that, bones, brain, breast, heart, and relationships, I like that. It's both men and women, uh, this is a, this is kind of a key statistic down here at the bottom now. Um, men age 30 to 7 only lose 1 to 3 percent of their testosterone production per year. So, you know, a man at age 50 may have only lost 20 percent of his testosterone and may not notice m many symptoms. But women have dramatic decreases in testosterone. And as you see, women age 20 to 40, they can lose up to 50% of their testosterone a year. And it's very common for me to measure uh, my female patients' testosterone levels and for them to be in single digits. Very, very low testosterone levels. You know, the positive effects, again, I, you just have an increase in energy from, uh, from testosterone. You really do. And there's a overall sense of well-being, I would say, is very, very common. Um, I see decreases in anxiety. There's this, it, you feel like, um, I hear it very commonly in my female patients that they just feel stressed and they don't feel like they can handle stress the way they used to. And I think testosterone definitely improves that. Breast protection, we talked about cardiovascular protection. Increased bone, very important. Increased muscle strength, incredibly important. And uh, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to maintain muscle mass as you get older. Huge advocate, I talk about it all the time. I talk to my patients about it all the time. Reduce fat, improve cholesterol levels, and then amino you know, performance. There's I always end with those. You know, a lot, several different ways of, uh, of uh, you know, replacing, and I've tried, you know, many of these, the um, patches, the creams, the gels, there's trochies that are sublingual, there's, there's many different ways. My preference, again, is pellets. Pellets, you don't have to worry about transferring hormone to anybody else, your children, animals, your spouse. Uh, the blood levels are much more stable. They fluctuate with your cardiac output, which means that the more active you are, more testosterone you're actually going to secrete. So, you know, again, big believer in, uh, in the pellet therapy. Again, tr creams and gels, got to be careful with the creams and gels. The other thing people don't realize with these creams and gels, you're supposed to rub these things in for a long time. I mean, minutes. And if you've ever tried rubbing in these uh, gels, it's, uh, it gets old quick. I mean, a minute goes by and you think you've been doing it for six minutes. So uh, not as easy as it seems. 
This I found was interesting. This is Testin, which is a, a gel that you can get for uh, testosterone. And uh, the interesting th thing that you, you can note from this is that the high dose of testin at 100 milligrams, uh, even at uh, six months, three, six months, only got levels up to about 450. And frankly, I, I like to see men's blood levels up around 900. So almost, it's about half of where I really like to see men's levels. And, you know, this is a slide on injectables. And I, again, I've said this before, I think this slide's a bit overdone. I'm not, you know, I don't like injectables that much. I will, I will use them. I have, I have uh, men patients that, uh, you know, don't want to use pellets, want to use injectables. We do use them. And uh, I, I find that I just have to do a lot more with the uh, injectable patients. Um, estrogen levels are higher and hematocrits are higher. So we have to do more, you know, blood disposal for the high hematocrits. I have to give more Remedex to uh, decrease uh, estrogen levels. And the biggest, the biggest problem that I really have with the injectables is are that uh, even injecting once a week, you're still going to get a roller coaster effect with the uh, testosterone injections. And uh, you're going to, you're going to overshoot the day you have your injection. And by the time it's time for your next injection, you're going to be pretty low. So you, you go on a bit of a roller coaster with the injections. And, uh, you know, technically, I really think that you should be injecting a couple times a week to get better blood levels. Now, pellets, that, you know, pellets have been around a long time. And I, I didn't realize this until I went to a course. But uh, pellets were developed in the, uh, in the 1930s. And uh, they were a prominent delivery method for hormones for a long time, especially in Europe and Australia. Um, but the thing that uh, basically killed the pellets were, was uh, Primer. When Primer was manufactured, it, uh, you know, it seemed easy. You took a pill, you were able to get estrogen you know, from the pill without having to have a quote unquote surgical procedure. And uh, pellets really went by the wayside. The one thing that, that, that is very important when we talk about pellet therapy, pellet therapy is bioidentical. And bioidentical, all that means, it's not, there's, you know, it's not a gimmick. All it means is that the chemical structure of the hormone, testosterone or estrogen, is exactly the same as what your body produces. So your body sees it as a natural hormone. That's, that's all it means. Um, so that's what bioidentical means. It's a very individualized dose. We, we go off patients' um, lab work by their weight, by their age. Um, you know, we look at their activity level. There's a lot of things we look at. Do they smoke? Are they, you know, you know, a you know, heavy, heavy exerciser? All of these things go into consideration when, you, when, we, uh, when we use the algorithm to decide on the uh, particular dose for the patient. Plus, the, uh, the uh, founder of BioT has, has, I don't remember what he said, 40 or 50,000 patients that he's put pellets in. So he's got a huge track record. He's, uh, he's experienced all the complications and problems that you could potentially have and uh, really knows how to dose these patients. It's a, it's a simple uh, little procedure. takes five minutes or so doesn't take very long. We put some numbing medicine in your uh, bottom, into the fatty portion of your bottom, make a small incision, insert a needle, and uh, place the pellets, take it out. There's no stitches. We put steri strips on the, uh, on the wound, put a, uh, put a dressing on, and uh, patients do really well. Um, you know, the, the one thing I caution patients on or to, uh, that you can't take baths or get in a hot tub for four or five days. You can take showers and, uh, and no lower body exercising for five days or so, just because we, you know, place these pellets, uh, subcutaneously. You know, the risk involved with, uh, with putting in the pellets again, 
quote unquote, being a surgical procedure, always there's a risk of infection. That risk is very, very low, it's around 1% or less. And um, the other thing that can happen, you can have what are called extrusions. You can actually extrude pellets. Uh, again, I don't see that very often, um, but uh, it can happen. And you warn patients about it. I warn patients about, like I said, any kind of complications you potentially have. And uh, what we do is if you do extrude a pellet or if, uh, you don't feel like you're getting, you know, the same relief that you've gotten in the past, say, or you just don't feel that great, uh, we'll either recheck lab work or you can actually boost uh, prior to your next uh, pellet therapy and, and provide a few more pellets to, uh, to get that uh, effect that uh, we want you to have. But again, you get a very stable blood level. There's not the roller coaster effect that you can get in other uh, uh, protocols. It's convenient. It's, uh, patients are very, very compliant. Low side effects again. Uh, again, best method for increasing bone density. I think that's really important. It's up to 8.3% increase in bone mass. So it's, it's, it's very important. Um, you know, does not stimulate breast tissue and no increase in blood clots. For some reason, I get that question a lot, that testosterone increases blood clots. It does not. Um, here's the osteoporosis study. Get 8.3% per year for pellet therapy. That's, that's pretty impressive. Again, Alzheimer's disease. Obviously, we're concerned about Alzheimer's disease. That's number three on the uh, list that we talked about earlier for uh, morbidity or for mortality. And uh, women get Alzheimer's disease, eight to one over men. Women on estrogen are 50% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. That's, that's a huge number. Uh, men with low testosterone are three times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. So it's important to replace, and uh, I'm a big advocate. Arthritis pain, it's interesting. I, I see this quite a bit. And sometimes I'm not sure if it's particularly arthritis pain. You can see this study. But uh, especially people that have uh, um, joint tenderness, muscle tenderness, like fibromyalgia patients, really get a big benefit from uh, testosterone replace replacement. I definitely see that for sure. Uh, this chart just shows you the blood levels of uh, testosterone. This would be a man, uh, a male patient. And uh, as you can see, we like to get patients up to around 900 so we can uh, help prevent any and all of these uh, uh, comorbid conditions that you can have. So erectile dysfunction, depression, coronary artery disease, fatigue, diabetes, uh, Alzheimer's disease, all these particular things, we want to push that level up to that uh, to that level. Uh, first pellet therapy, I tell patients that you can retain a bit of fluid with your first pellet therapy. I'm not sure why that happens, but uh, you know it definitely can happen, and, and it uh, it happened to me because uh, uh, I had pellet therapy I think the first time in the summer, and I noticed that uh, when I when my uh, Feet especially, for some reason, got hot and they felt like they were swollen. Uh, again, we can, we can treat that with a mild diuretic. Uh, again, pellet extrusion, we, we talked about earlier, acne. Uh, men, definitely reduction in sperm cats can happen. And if you're a young, uh, young male and uh, you're wanting to have more children, then uh, we look at other alternatives besides testosterone therapy. You know, I use uh, HCG therapy, I use Clomid, and uh, again, we'll do things to, uh, to not decrease your, uh, or, you know, not decrease or make you sterile. Well, those, those are kind of the take-home points uh, about what we do. I've got two programs in the clinic that, uh, that I run, and uh, that's it, just two programs. Um, I, I have a program that's just a, a hormone program where you come in and do a consult for hormones at uh, a little less expensive and uh, takes less time. Still get a history and physical, but it's not quite as in-depth, um, you know, going into uh, some of the specifics that I'll talk about in a second with our other program. But uh, we get lab work 
and uh, and then uh, depending on the lab work, then we uh, do the pellet therapy. Uh, we get lab work after your pellets are inserted, so post pellet labs at four to six weeks after the pellets are in. We bring you back, see how you're doing, see what the lab work looks like, and then um, and then women typically will make it three to four months with pellets, and men four to five months. And when I tell my patients, the 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 usually the First symptom or the symptom that was really bothering you the most that goes away after pellet therapy is usually the first thing that returns. And for the most part, patients call us and uh, tell us it's time to reschedule uh, for their pellet appointment. So, uh, and again, we, we test some other, we test other lab values. Uh, I always check thyroid levels for the, even the hormone uh, side of the program. I check a vitamin D3 level, I check a B12 level, and uh, we'll replace those things as necessary. The other side of my program is what I call the metabolic reset program. I don't like the the, the topic of, of uh, weight loss or weight loss clinics. Uh, I believe that, uh, that weight is, is a hormonal issue, and uh, that's the way we address it. And that side of the program, again, there's a consult. History and physical, we address all the hormones, just, just as we do on the, uh, the, the hormone side of the practice. Uh, but we also go heavily into diet, nutrition, uh, sleep, stress management, exercise, and, uh, and again, hormones. So we, we address all those things. And then on that side of the program, we'll put you on different protocols. Um, Usually, most of my diet program is a low-carbohydrate diet. I believe a low-carbohydrate diet, so we go over that and uh, spend a lot of time on education. And then uh, I incorporate fasting programs for all my patients. And those are very varied, uh, depending on the patient, how much weight they have to lose, how many comorbid uh, conditions they have. So it's a bit more complicated, so I see those patients back monthly. And uh, we... Uh, delve into those issues. I will use some drugs, um, you know, metformin. I will use, uh, I'll use Victoza occasionally. Um, and I actually will use Adipex uh, occasionally just for the fasting days of the program. I don't use Adipex on a daily basis. I don't believe in it. I think that it does, it can be useful on fasting days, if it's a full fasting day, and uh, you use Adipex, but at the most, I'm going to use it a couple days a week, and that's it. So, uh, that's the program, that's what we do. Um, I had a couple of questions before we got started, and I'll address those real quick, and if nothing else comes in, we'll, uh, we'll call it quits for the day. Um, one thing that I that, uh, that that I'm asked a lot from women is they really are concerned about masculinizing masculinizing effects of the uh, testosterone. And I tell them that, that uh, you know, especially according to Dr. Donovan, that, that that it doesn't really happen. You can have an increase in blood flow to the you know, vaginal area, and it can seem like things are bigger than than what they were, but it's actually blood flow. And it's not that you're growing anything. So, uh, you know, I, I address that concern. That That's a common concern, uh, you know, for my uh, female patients. And, uh, and then again, the idea of uh, testosterone for women and if it's necessary or not. And, uh, you know, I, I really believe that it is, especially when I see the results and how well patients do. Uh, with testosterone therapy. It's, it's, it's a really, really is beneficial for women. Uh, the other thing I'll address is men. Um, men are, they're, they're difficult to, to uh, talk to in the sense that uh, uh, they don't want to admit that they have an issue. And again, I think it all stems back to uh, machoism that, uh, that everything that you see you know, on these pills and supplements that are supposed to increase testosterone, it's all from a performance aspect. That uh, and then 
you know, you're you're inundated by that uh, message. So that's all you think of testosterone. And when you speak about testosterone to men, they're you know they're like, well, you, you know, I don't have a problem in that area. You know, I mean, so. Uh, but what I you know really try to you know bring across is you know just put that on the back burner. Don't think about it. But you have to look at all the benefits that you receive from testosterone therapy, uh, men and women. But uh, you know. Everything we've talked about uh, as far as, you know, Alzheimer's prevention, you think clearer, you have more energy, you sleep better, you know, cardiac protection, bone protection, all these things incredibly important as we age. So uh, that's about it. I, I don't see any questions right now, so I think we'll, uh, we'll end this, uh, go ahead and end this. Um, again, uh, we're located in uh, Ridgeland. At the uh, name of the clinic is Personalized Wellness. Uh, we're on Highway 51, Suite D. Uh, we're on the second floor of a fourplex office uh, uh, complex that uh, face the uh, Highway 51. Get them on the second floor. I've got two yellow Adirondack chairs out on the patio, so that's how most people find the uh, clinic. Uh, phone number 601 898 0911. Uh, my website is www.thewelldoc.com. Uh, it's under construction right now because I've changed uh, some of the programs in the clinic. Um, but uh, we can give you all the pricing. Give us a call, and uh, we'll take care of you. Again, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, listening, and uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, talking to, Sue, uh, to some of you and uh, seeing you in the clinic. All right, thank you.